This question starts out by asking if the normal model is appropriate. Knowing the normal model, we would expect a certain percentage of times to fall within a certain region. So if we look at this, we can graph the, with the mean and standard deviation on a normal curve. Let's go ahead and take 103.27 and 3.47 and put it into the normal model. You'll notice in the link, the description below, a link to the David M. Lane applet. Go ahead and click on that link and put it into the normal model with me. Right here we are. We've put in the mean and the standard deviation. On my problem, it wanted 106.74, which is one standard deviation above the mean. Now, make sure to check to see if it wants above or below. My problem wants below. If you notice, this is more than 50%. Now, to get the exact percentage, you should be able to break this down into all of its portions. Using the 68 rule, I know that 34% is contained in this area and 50% is to the left of 103.27. You can use this as a guideline to help you out. Now, 50 plus 34 is 84%. That is the percent of times I would expect to be less than it. Going on to the next part, what is the actual percent of times less than 106.74? 106.74 would be located right here. There are only one, two, three, four times that are greater than that, meaning that there are 49 times less than that. 49 out of 53 are less than, that is 92.5, excuse me, 92.5, just rounding it right there as I was about to say, 92.5. There's a rule for this problem that I use just for this problem. It's something I made up to get the right answer. I call it the 5% rule. It's only to get the right answer on this problem. If the percentages are off by more than 5%, they do not agree. So you only have two possible answers. Yes, because the normal model is appropriate, or no, because the normal model is not appropriate. My percentages are off by more than 5%, so no, because the normal model is not appropriate. We can't use the normal model to describe this data because it doesn't really work well with it. We expected there to be 84% less than that, and there was 92.5 it's not really working out quite well. You'll see this in this next problem. Going on right here, we see data that doesn't look normal at all. Now, according to the normal model, what percent of receivers would we expect to get less than two standard deviations below the mean? Going over here, two standard deviations below would be 2.5% because we'd add up both of these. So let's go back and put in 2.5%. But in actuality, what does that mean? Well, two standard deviations below the mean is actually, I believe, 750 yards less than 450. That'd be two standard deviations below the mean, which is negative 300. Some receivers should be getting negative 300 yards. And I don't think that's happening in the NFL, and it's not happening by this data right here. Explain why using the normal model for this data is not appropriate. Well, the data is extremely skewed to the right. That is the problem. Remember, the tail often indicates which way the skew is. Also, you can look at if the mean is higher than the median. My guess, the mean being up here at 450 somewhere, the median is probably down here a little bit. The mean is gonna be skewed towards the outliers, right, like that. Going on to the next problem, this is where the David M. Lane applet comes in a lot of use. It's going to use it in the order for which it appears. You'll start with the above, below, between, and outside. So let's go ahead and put in the standard normal. One thing I want to highlight here is you can always draw the standard normal below any of your distributions. It can be a big help because it will show you the z-scores. This is the standard normal and can always be drawn below any of your normal curves if you're going one standard devi de deviation up, two standard deviations up, three standard deviations up. So a z-score above 1.5. 4, 5, excuse me. That would be right here. Now, let's do some important computations in our head before answering this. This would be more than one standard deviation up, but less than two standard deviations up. At two standard deviations up, there is 2.5% of the area. At one standard deviation up and above, there is 16% of the area. So this answer should be between 2.5 and 16%. Practice doing that when you do these problems. If we landed in this region, which we did, we would have 
more than 2.5%, but less than 16%. Great practice for the test. So let's use the David M. Lane applet to get the actual answer. The actual answer is 7.35%, which meets our expectations. Another good way to check to see if you got the answer right, because if your answer is different, you've done something incorrectly. Now we're looking at less than 1.8. This is going to be a similar answer, but in reverse. If you notice, we're going to the left side now. So with this in mind, less than 1.8, well, above here we had 2.5%, and above here we had 16%. So now it has to be between 97.5% and 84%. Let's go ahead and check this theory right here. Below 1.8. And as we said, less than 97.5%, but greater than 84%, 96.41. If you're a little bit confused on how to do that, go back to your chart right here and try adding up. If you add up all the area, area you will see that you'll get those answers we achieved just a moment ago. Going to the next problem, we're doing between. You might have to zoom in on these graphs because sometimes this area on the side doesn't show up and two can look very similar. Between negative 1.7 and 1.9. Let's go right to David M. Lane and get the answer. Between negative 1.7 and 1.9. The answer is 92.67. And here's our graph. And the answer was 92.67. An important thing to note right here, this is kind of close to negative 2 and positive 2. Not really close, but with our negative 2, positive 2, we would expect 95%, and our answer is kind of close to that. So now we are doing outside of, because this is an absolute value. As in, if you take the absolute value of a z-score, as in negative 10, it should be greater than 1.3. So the areas to the outside, the bigger numbers, would be the correct answers. Now, thinking about this, 68% is in the middle. Well, that leaves 32% on the outside. This will be less than that, but you know, less than 32%, greater than 5% because of our 95 rule, somewhere in between 32 and 5%. We could narrow it down closer if we started to go in further, but that's good enough for now. So let's go ahead and go back here and do outside of That is 17.7%. I want to mention some important things on this problem. You can do them other ways, as in you could just do below for this problem, and I believe it was 1.35, so we could go below 1.35, and you can actually obtain the answer from this graph. This is where we can trick people on the test. If we ask you to find the area outside, as in the bottom question, you could find it using this because the, whole, the total area will equal up to 100%. So the area to the right is half the area you need. If you watch this white area closely, it'll turn black. And then you would just double it. So you can use math rules, as in taking 100%, subtracting out 91.15, and you will get half the total area. So you would just then times it by 2 to get 17.7%. A lot of ways to do these problems, a lot of ways to understand the normal curve. Practice up with this, and you'll be good. Going on to the last problem right here, we have some steer that are 1,088 pounds with a standard deviation of 67, and you have how to write out a normal model. Good thing to remember right here. So we want to know what percent of steers will weigh over 900 pounds. Well, that is below the mean. Let's go ahead and put this into the normal model. We have 1088, and we have a standard deviation of 67. Let's go ahead and look at where 900 is. 900 is down here somewhere, and it said over 900 pounds. Well, it's going to be pretty much everything except for the 0.15% down here. I would guess close to 99.3%. It's going to be a lot. 99.75%. Just looking at this, you should be able to get a decent guess 
at the z-score because we could put the standard normal below here and put 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. One important thing to note is that always check these at the bottom. I almost got tricked there. It only wants one decimal place. We're on the previous problem it wanted two. So if you're doing the quiz right now, always look at these to make sure you're answering it the way it wants it. Percent of steers below 1,150. Going back here, 1,150 is right at one standard deviation. So it's going to be about 83%. That's just a guess on my part. I say 82.8. Oh, 82.2. It rounds to 82.3. I know this from breaking down the graph over here. It would have been 84%, and we were a little bit below that. Once again, the 6895, 99.7 rule comes in a lot of use. So 82.3%. So what percent of steers will weigh between 950 and 1300 pounds? Well, let's go look at this right here. Between 950 and 1300 pounds, let's kind of think about it for a moment. 950 is two standard deviations below the mean, and 1300 is way above. So we can get a good guess, and we would see here that with our 6895 99.7 rule, we would only have about 2.5% on the outside, so this does meet our expectations once again, 97.95. And that would round up to 98. There we go. Good luck with the assignment.